Adventist Health System hospitals. And it really has been shown to save lives and to improve care. It does take some getting used to, but it's starting to work. A couple of months ago, we installed our back office functions. It's called iSynergy. And it's our payroll system and the accounting system and the materials management systems, all of those back office systems that are critical. No other hospital in the history of Adventist Health System has ever adopted all three of those, the Ice Energy Program, the Cerner Electronic Medical Record, and Cerner Patient Accounting in the same year. But we're doing that. Amen. Again, a steep learning curve. But that's part of what we're doing to bring care to what it needs to be at Florida Hospital this morning. We've seen a need for updating our look. I've been struggling with the carpet on the third floor of the patient care areas. We've tried extracting it. It looks dirtier when you do that. We're about to rip it out. The carpet on the third and fourth floors of the patient care areas will be gone. And in its place will be a vinyl floor that we're going to try and incorporate some design into so it's not just a floor in square. So it'll kind of and it'll be a combination of vinyl that looks a little bit like stone and vinyl that looks like wood floor. We're going to do some painting. We're going to replace the cubicle curtains in the patient rooms. We're going to make the place look like a Florida hospital. And I'm excited about that. We have seen, since we became a Florida hospital, a 5% increase in the number of admissions that we have seen. We've seen a 4.8% increase in the number of visits to our emergency room. And as a result, we've been a bit overwhelmed. So waits in our emergency room are longer than they should be. Waits for an inpatient bed have been longer than they should be. We are licensed for 112 beds, but we have pared that back to where we're only really using 87. Mm. We've got to expand that capacity Amen. so that we don't hold patients in the emergency room. Waiting for a bed. Got to fix that. ED visits. If you've ever worked in the emergency room and somebody shows up for care, typically we assess them. We focus on the immediate needs. And if they're to be discharged, we give them instructions. Instructions that include follow up with the doctor. If there's a prescription they need to get, do that. And in healthcare, we have also been guilty of when people return in two weeks. We have a tendency to ask some leading questions. Did you follow up with your doctor? Did you get that prescription filled that we gave you? And we jump immediately to it's your fault then. <laughs> You're non-compliant and you are reaping the results that you sow. Great. We've come to realize that some of these frequent flyers 10, 15, 20, 30 times in our emergency room that there's something going on there beyond our perceived non-compliance. We've come to realize a best practice in this region of Adventist Health System 
is a program we're calling Community Cares. It appoints a volunteer health coach to that 5% of the population that are the frequent flyers. These are the people that aren't going to the doctor, that aren't getting their prescription filled. And we're coming to find out that the reason they didn't go see a doctor is they didn't have insurance and no doctor would give them an appointment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or they had to choose between eating and buying their medicine. Kind of shoots that smug, non-compliant thing right in that moment. Where are we getting those health coaches from? We're finding that through Bethune Cookman University, some of the nursing programs that are around here, and Stetson University, they've got several health care programs. And students going through those programs benefit from interacting with patients while they're going through their course of study. And so a didactic program of study has been developed and shared with the universities. These students that sign up for this program are given that didactic training. And there's, there's a practicum or a practical part of their training where each of those students are given four or five of these high-risk patients. Their job is not to provide care, but to provide coaching. So if they realize that Mrs. Jones doesn't have a ride, let's arrange a ride. We can do that. It's not expensive. You'd be amazed at how many people will sign up to give people rides to the doctor's office if they just know about it or if they can't afford their medicine. There's lots of programs that are available today. The drug companies, even in their direct-to-consumer marketing, talk about if you can't afford your medicine, we'll help you. There are lots of programs like that that are available if we will just get organized behind them. We have free health care available in free clinics all over our region. Connecting those patients that need it if they can't afford it with those resources becomes a part of that coaching, coaching experience. And that's going on in all of the hospitals but ours, but we're adopting it in the next couple of months. Amen. Amen. I think it's a perfect opportunity to honor God. Yes with the care we provide our community by extending this healing ministry of Christ to the <laughs> Creation health. The next two gifts I have for you, and this I have a one for each of you, again, strategically placed in the back. The deacons will give it to you on your way out. Is a copy of the book Creation Health Discovery. The word creation is an acronym for the eight principles of health that we as a church have known for so long. The C in creation is for choice. The R is for rest. The E is for environment. The A is for activity. T is for trust in God. I is interpersonal relationships. The O is for outlook. N is for nutrition. I want each of you to have a copy of that. And for your library, Amen. I have Amen. a starter kit. Yes, sir. A starter kit that I want you to have to get excited about creation. Because you see, I don't think the hospital wants to Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Please fill out and sign that I don't believe that the hospital 
hospital by itself can carry on the education that needs to occur in our community by itself. Because we know that through education, we can improve the health status. It is going to require some changes in lifestyle. But we have that message. And I would love to have you help us with that. Amen. 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 Matthew 25. Verses 31 to 40. When you start back at Matthew 24, some of you are worried that I'm just getting started. I'm not going to preach anyway. You want to preach tonight. Pull the Bible. In chapter 24 of Matthew, Jesus, coming close to the end of his ministry here on earth, is struggling because his disciples still haven't kind of gotten it. It says in 24, at the beginning there, that they had been to the temple and the disciples were admiring this amazing edifice. And Jesus dashes their hope by telling them that it's going to be fun. Our lesson study today our opening song taken from this passage, Matthew 24 and 25. Our opening song in Sabbath school, not the one that we, uh, that we sang in church. In verse 4, Jesus starts to talk to them about the most important thing that he wants them to know. And that is I don't want you to be deceived. <laughs> then it talks about, down in verse 12, about the moral decay that will be prevalent in the end times, and that most people won't even know what love is. But those who stand firm until the end will be saved. That was our lesson study. Moving on, the coming of the Son of Man, lessons from the fig tree. There's a couple of uh, parables that he gives there, the wise and foolish virgins, uh, virgins, the parable about investing money in, in, in chapter 25. And then he gets down in chapter 25 to verse 31 where he's talking about the final judgment. Yes, sir. Got my attention. Yes, sir. Final judgment. When the Son of Man comes in all His glory and the angels with Him, He'll assume His role as judge and king. Everyone on earth will be gathered together before Him and He will separate those who are genuinely His from those who are not. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats during the shearing time, He will call the sheep to His right, and I'm using your right, I know it's my left, but for visual, yeah. your right, and he'll put the goats to his left. And he will say to those on his right, You are God's children. Come, it's time for you to receive your inheritance. When others were thirsty, you gave them water. When they were hungry, you gave them food. When they were without a place to live, you took them in. When they had nothing suitable to wear, you gave them clothes. When they were sick, you visited them. Yes. And comforted them. When they were in jail, you didn't forget them. What you did for them, you did for me. King James, what you have done unto the least of these, my yes. brethren, you have done unto me. Yes. Amen. And then the righteous say to him, But he didn't do it to you. And in verse. 40, the king says, I know you didn't realize this because a change took place in your life. And kindness and compassion became a part of your nature. 
Kindness and compassion became a part of your nature. What you did by caring for the underprivileged was as pleasing to my father <coughs> as if you had done it for me. Amen. Amen. There's a blessing that we receive when we care for the least of these people. A young and successful executive was traveling down a city street one day in his brand new Jaguar. Come on. And he was going too fast. Suddenly, a brick smashed into the side of his brand new Jaguar. I like to think the Jaguar was white. By the way. That's yeah. my favorite. They had a beautiful white Jaguar. And a brick slams into yeah. the side of it. Okay. XK. He slammed his brakes on XK. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. The Jag screeched to a stop. Backs up to the place where the brick impact occurred. He jumps out of his car. Yeah. He sees a scrawny little boy. Mm. And he grabs that little boy, pins him against the car, and says, what are you doing? It's a brand new car. That brick you just threw at it did a lot of damage, and it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. The little boy. Please, mister, please, I'm so sorry, but I didn't know what else to do. Mm. I threw the big brick because no one else would stop. Mm. With tears dripping down his face and off of his chin, the boy pointed to a spot just around the parked car where his brother had gone over the curb in his wheelchair, had fallen and scraped himself up, mm. and he was too big for the little boy to pick up. It's my brother, he said. He rolled off the curb and fell out of his wheelchair, and I can't lift him up. Would you please help me get him back into his wheelchair? He's heard. Moved beyond words, the driver tried to swallow the rapidly swelling lump in his throat. He hurriedly lifted the handicapped boy back into the wheelchair, then took out his linen handkerchief and dabbed at the wounds that the little boy had. Thank you, mister, said the little boy. Too shook for words, the man simply stood there as the little boy pushed his brother down the sidewalk towards home. It was a slow walk back to the Jaguar. The damage was noticeable. But the man never bothered to return. He kept the dent there to remind him of this message. Don't go through life so fast that it takes somebody throwing a brick at you to get your attention. Come on, please. Come on. We have healing to offer our community. Amen. Amen. I need your help. Together, we can make a difference. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
closing hymn is hymn number 626. If you will please stand with me. Thank mm -hmm. you. 